I'm Anthony Gormley, I'm a sculptor. I guess sculpture uh, appeals to um, a certain island mentality of self-reliance and bloody-mindedness. And, uh, and I think we like to uh, hoe our own row and somehow be practical. Uh, I think there's not so much idealism and quite a lot of uh, wanting to investigate the material world and uh, it's a different kind of sculpture I think to uh, maybe the tradition of European sculpture generally and somehow the bricoleur side of uh, uh, every every Englishman has a shed, and in the shed, they kind of become themselves because we're all a little bit repressed and uh, a little bit shy, and uh, we need a little place to kind of find ourselves in putting things together. And some Englishmen make bicycles or flying machines or just potter about um, mending things in their sheds, but some of us make sculpture. Not really. I mean, they, 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 uh, the British Council sort of promoted us as the new British sculpture in the, in the late 70s. Uh, uh, and certainly, you know, I was sent to... Yeah, the Sao Paulo Biennale, the Venice Biennale, uh, the Milan Triennale. Um, always by the British Council and always in some way part of this idea of a new movement. But of course, it was entirely made up because even though we knew each other and there were certain associations, there was not really, there was not really uh, a movement. It wasn't like we published a manifesto and we're all, we were a group of individuals who all came out of art school at the same time. And I think that's what makes it make, make, made it good, a good time. Very different voices, all, I think, very committed to the idea of making objects that would change people's minds as they hopefully changed ours in making them. It's a funny thing, isn't it? We just, we just come from the Venice Biennale and, and the, in a way, rather 19th century idea about national schools and national... I, I don't think of myself really as a... English artists. I mean, it's, uh, it's not terribly relevant to me. My mother was German, my father was half Irish, half English. Uh, I, I have shown my work all over the world from a very early age. I, you know, was visiting uh, many countries in Europe and by the time I was 20 I'd visited most countries between England and India and I I think of myself, yeah, as a citizen of the world, not, not particularly as an Englishman. So the, I, you could say that, that culture can be used by uh, national governments uh, to promote and, and uh, advertise their, themselves. Sometimes it can work, sometimes it, 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 it doesn't. And uh, I think in, 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 in the case of the Damien Hurst generation, I think they were, that they they seem to work and they seem to um, they seem to be happy with the Union Jack and sort of uh, fish and chips and a kind of stereotypical image of of red buses and bobbies with hats. Um, but I was never very interested in that, and uh, uh, um, you know, it's a, it's a form of cultural packaging that I would somewhat question. I think that I'm very, very interested in indigenous culture, but uh, what constitutes British or even English culture uh, is very difficult to define.
and in this time of migration where they're trying to get people to take an Englishness exam before uh, allowing you right leave to stay or nationality seems to me um, a desperate attempt to try to find something that probably doesn't exist. Well, certainly, you know, art schools, I mean, we, we all, if you think of all of the people you've mentioned, so Richard, Tony, um, I suppose Anish, um, certainly Alison Wilding, um, uh, Peter Randall Page, um, and I suppose the previous generation, um, all of us had an incredible art school education. The, the art schools of the 60s and 70s were amazing places. So art schools were places where, where people who didn't otherwise fit in could find a place and do exciting things and be part of um, yeah, a, a, a community of uh, trying things out. And it was really, particularly foundation courses were, were places where you went and you, you thought by, by messing about with different materials and mediums. Art schools were populated by living artists who, who lived by teaching. Uh, some of them were famous, some of them were not famous, but all of them were examples of people who cared about making, for its own sake, making new things. And uh, they were lively places and, and uh, the belief in a liberal education that was possible through, through art, um, I think, uh, was yeah, the reason that there were so many uh, yeah, really original and powerful talents that came out of art schools. I think by leaving your own culture, you, you, you can look at it as if for the first time from outside, and that's always a good thing. Uh, and you may have taken my previous comments as being somewhat negative about, as it were, Englishness or what it means to be in Britain. But I think, you know, having travelled quite a lot, and particularly in the in the East, um, I think the the experience of another culture that is not based on a desert religion and monotheism that doesn't really value um, uh, the well maybe the, the certainly in the time that I was there doesn't value the dominance of market values uh, uh, over uh, the real quality of life I think that was incredibly important to me but the most obviously the most important thing to me was learning vipassana meditation and realizing that all of this uh, so-called classical english education that i'd had was actually less important than simply concentrating on being and i think learning with with goenka how to observe life as, as uh, experienced in a body and realizing that that was more valuable really than anything written in a book was incredibly important. To value being over doing, to value in a sense the quality of being and to recognize it, to, to see an emotion arise, a feeling arise. Uh, and to somehow acknowledge it, but not to identify with it completely. So that the, the I think the whole the whole experience of of uh, Buddhist philosophy, not as a piece of information or knowledge, but as direct experience. Yeah, that was a wonderful gift. And, and, and I think I wouldn't have become a sculptor in the way that I have with, 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 without that experience. Making art is a form of uh, 
thinking through making, thinking through touch and, and, and sensation. Uh, I don't think you can be taught. Uh, it's, it is about uh, sensibility that is independent of technique. You can be taught uh, a thousand and one techniques, but if you don't have the sensibility, there's no point. Uh, the thing about art school is that this is a this is a, a community of interest, which hopefully will allows different people with different perceptions to come together and in some way help each other to see, and to feel. And that's why they're good. It's 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 not because there's a hierarchy of power, people with more knowledge and less knowledge. It's just an open space in which people can experiment and in a way. Uh, yeah, energize each other. And I think that art schools, when they are good, when they are open, when they are, when the, the primary, primary engine of instruction, you might say, or interest, is actually the body of the students themselves and their mutual regard, their mutual competition, but also respect. And, uh, this is what makes a good art school. Uh, it has to be open, but it also has to have, in a way, a, a, a spirit of the highest expectations of what art can, can be, and indeed ha how it can transform uh, the individual and hopefully society. I think it's only essential insofar as the, these, these environments in which uh, creative people come together, maybe for the only time in their life. It's a very short time, three, five, maximum seven years. Uh, and this, this experience of, in a way, share, a, shared, a shared location in which uh, different kinds of creative uh, intelligence and souls can grow together is, is absolutely, I, th I think it's essential. I think, I think it's a, essential part of the, you could say, the individuation of an artist. All of us who've been lucky enough to go to art school, I think, recognize it. Collaboration is one of the great joys, I think. Uh, collaboration suggests that you can come together with the possibility of a time. I mean, I've collaborated a lot with dance and, and you know, for me, you know, this is escape from the long and arduous <laughs> sort of development of a sculpture that always takes time and through many processes. Uh, but working for a dance, you know you have an event, you know you have a limited time, but you're working with real people, with a group of dancers, with a, with a, with a particular stage often in mind. And uh, as a foil to the you know, the, the, the life of the studio, collaborating with dancers is a joy for me. I personally think that the failure of modernity was that, that not, not enough artists were trained or interested enough to contribute to the common uh, ground or to, to collective space. And if we think of the 20th century, um, in a way, sculpture began to, to, to recede into the interior. It became institutionalized. There, was, uh, there, there, there didn't seem to be a common uh, symbolic order that allowed sculpture to, to, to somehow do that same job of reinforcing the central beliefs, uh, hopes, fears, um, histories of a, of, a, of a place. What is a city? A city is, 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 a, is an expression of shared collective value. It should be a place of inspiration where people come together and share things that they weren't otherwise able to share. If the, if, if the texture of the city doesn't include, as it were, uh, the things that give us joy uh, and, uh, or that, that give us trouble, as, uh, as it were, imaginative carriers, uh, then the city has failed us. I think I, I, I made this show very much in relation to the human show in the Forte Belvedere of two years ago, and that was about mass. Uh, and Mario was quite right to say today that this is about energy. This is about this is about space and light and experience. It's still about the body. 
the body the body is the body of every single viewer that comes into the field of the work uh, and i i was very um i was very keen in relation to what we were talking about you could say the social space of art to make a work that takes this place of spectacle in which the, there is an auditorium that normally contains a passive audience that does nothing but simply gives their attention to then the spectacle that is the other side of the proscenium arch. I wanted to meditate on what the nature of theatre and the nature of spectacle was and transform it. So we have taken out the lights, we have, we, we have then uh, allowed the, the building to have its lights but then uh, unified the dialectic between the the stage and the and the and the audience or the auditorium, and treated it absolutely in the same way, and thereby made an instrument of auto observation of proprioception. You bring your own body, you make your journey through this field of interruptions, and become the viewed for other viewers. So it's also an instrument by which the viewers become the viewed. So this healing of the dialectic between, you could, you could say, actor and acted upon, or um, you know, uh, the spectacle and the audience, uh, also creates a, spa a social space, a social space in which the art is an experience and a, and a space, not an object. Because I absolutely believe that, that Actually, it is art as an open place of first-hand experience. It has nothing to do with the making of an image, the, the creation of a narrative. All of the, There's plenty of narrative in there, but it's, in, it's absolutely intrinsic to everybody's journey. Those journeys are, in some senses, shared and visible by everybody else because the trajectory of your movement through that field leaves these vibrations and... Uh, for, for, for several minutes after, after someone has passed. So this is a kind of, um, for me you could say this is a kind of utopian proposition. This is liberating the zips from a Barnett Newman painting into three dimensions. Thinking about the space of art as a resonator for human energy a ground against which we feel and re-experience our own bodies and the thoughts and feelings within them in an intense way. The nature of the work is that it's, it, it, it enforces a kind of choreography. We have to walk in a way that is not uh, mechanical. We are dis dislocated from a goal-orientated form of movement. Normally, we don't notice our own walking because in our minds is the destination. I wanted to slow everything down and just allow this, both for the viewer and for the experiencer, to become a moment where you had to, in order to remain standing or remain moving, be highly conscious of your balance, your, 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 your route. You have to concentrate. And in the process of concentrating, your body is liberated from, as it were, the norms of locomotion, of walking, of, of a, of a goal-orientated form of movement. And to that, to that extent, I hope that Lost Horizon is a way of returning us to our own lives, to our own experience, to, our, to the shared nature of our collective experience freshly in order to allow life itself to be the thing that is contemplated.